Hey, it's me, GV, and welcome to a new thing. A new thing. Can you believe it? Uh, I was recording Skyrim, and I was like, I really like this thing of, like, having a big playthrough, but then the middle, like, you know, Wednesday day be something different. But I was doing the other two playthroughs, you know, Nerum and New Vegas or Morrowind. But I was like, whenever I wait in Skyrim... I talk about what game that I'm playing, right? And it's like, why just talk about it? Why not do it? And so, <laughs> heralding back way to the start of my channel, we had a thing called like, Why Not Wednesday? Where every Wednesday I would make a video on just whatever. Like for instance, in uh, Grand Theft Auto 4, there was like a certain bridge where I would drive like a Corvette through the middle and try to hit as many people as I could, which sounds pretty macabre. Which apparently it's pronounced macabre, by the way, but, you know, whatever. Uh, back in the day. And it was fun, because, you know, obviously variety and kept it fresh and whatever. Anyways, long story short, the, what I'm trying to say here is we're going to try something new. And that is, for Wednesday, whatever the hell I feel like playing, we're going to record it. You know? I feel like that sounds like fun. Uh, a perfect game to do that with is Risk of Rain 2. And I've already given a pretty big intro here, so we're going to jump right in. Risk of Rain 2, for those that don't know, is a roguelike, which if you don't know what that means, basically permadeath, um, largely relying on items, like getting a good run with the correct item, you know, good items, uh, good synergy, uh, and then usually brutally difficult. Uh, some examples are the Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus, which I have gotten every achievement in, Risk of Rain 1, which I loved, which is a lot different than this game. Uh, Darkest Dungeon, which is one of my favorite indie games of all time. Crypt of the Necro Dancer, uh, you know, some of the stuff. Anyways, I'm a big fan of the genre. We're going to jump right in, um, and I'll sort of explain as we go here. Uh, now, I am a total newbie at this. I played a little bit of Risk of Rain 1, not as much as I should have played, because I really did love it. Um, but I, I'm ba don't expect anything, because seriously, I am brand new to this game. I, I have, like, a decent amount of hours, but only because I love this game, and I've been having a lot of fun with it. There's three difficulties here. We're going to go Rainstorm, which is kind of normal. This is the way the game is meant to be played. Test your abilities and skills against formidable foes. I would definitely go Monsoon. There is no way in hell we could do this. Player health regen, negative 40%. Difficulty scaling, plus 50%. No way in hell. I. It is already, like, impossible for me to win a run on Rainstorm. So, this is not going to happen. <laughs> it's just not. Now, last night, at the time of this recording, I literally unlocked every character. Uh, Acrid, who's from the first game. Uh, I unlocked the loader. I have not played either. Unlocked Rex a little bit ago. Played the mercenary like once. Uh, played the artificer last run, and it was actually super duper fun. Uh, Engineer played once. I, this character seems definitely better fit for multiplayer. This game is like, I think, four-player multiplayer, by the way. Um, multi is fun. Huntress is fun. Captain is mega fun. Uh, and then the commando is really fun, too, but just because it's very solid. So I'm feeling either the Captain or the Huntress. Now, I'm not good at the Huntress is the thing. The Captain feels just overpowered. You know what? Let's go for the Captain. So here are our skills, and we can talk about it as we get in. But let's jump right in, because I know if there's one thing I do all the time, it is just over-explain and, you know, go on and on and on and blah, blah, blah. Anyways, I love this game. It's very popular. Uh, you've probably heard about it if you haven't. It's just probably because it's not part of the games that you... Uh, you know, cycle through. But this game, like I said, is a roguelike, uh, which means it's highly randomized. I, I've i noticed the map seem to be the same. Uh, whereas I feel in Risk of Rain 2, the maps were the same also. And usually I think you get like a choice between a couple of maps for each level. You see at the top right, it says stage one. Uh, so each stage you get kind of like, you don't get a choice, but you know, it kind of like switches between the two. Um, anyways, enemies will spawn. And we have our abilities in the bottom right. What I'm using here is mouse one. I'm obviously on a mouse and keyboard for a shooter. That's what you want to do, of course. What is this noise of this shuffle? Oh, it's this guy down here. Okay. Uh, so, again, I'm new to this game, and I'm new to the captain as well. I've played the captain, I think, one run from start to finish. So, do not expect expert-level gameplay whatsoever. If you're expecting that, <laughs> you're expecting the wrong thing. Check this out. Best skill that the captain's got freaking amazing i switched that out by accident at one point and that was a big mistake because there are certain items that you can get what did that just oh i didn't even get that see I'm making mistakes already 
Um, so here, yeah, so the playthrough, the play, the play, oh boy, I'm not gonna be able to talk, am I? The gameplay style is that of a shooter, okay? Now watch this. Eh, eh, eh. Look at that. That's why the captain's good. That's so nuts. Seriously, that is so nuts for just like a, a base ability. All right, so here we have some items. Uh, bustling fungus. Nope. So we have our right mouse button down there in the bottom right. Mouse two, like stuns enemies. So we can actually stun this guy out of his, out of his attack. So bustling fungus will heal us if we stand still. I'm going to go for a random. These question marks are random. So you see it costs $25. Gasoline, I like. I like all the offensive stuff. Give me a uh, give me offense all day, every day, and I will be a happy, happy camper. Okay, uh, so let's see. So also, the captain starts with this little thing in the top left. You see that little, that little uh, red outlined little circle thing? So I think that's its passive, the captain's passive, which like summons microbots to shoot down projectiles. It actually seems to be really overpowered. As far as I can tell. We're going to do the orbital strike thing, but he looks like he's getting out of it. Yeah, that's me being bad. Not being bad, just being inexperienced, you know? I'm not going to be self-deprecating because that's just what it is. I played this character once. Okay, so there's too many things to explain, too many things to talk about. You can see our objective in the top right is to find and activate the teleporter. But there's items to grab first. Sticky bomb. I like it. Gives you a chance to uh, attach a sticky bomb on hit. And as far as I understand... On hit effects are really, really, really good for this character, the captain. Reason being, uh, the mouse one ability is a shotgun that you can charge. And I'll explain that more, but for now, let's keep moving. Okay, so this is a 3D printer. 3D printers use the color of items, so that was a white item, which is common. You can see we have a red item, which is legendary in the top left. The captain starts with that. Again, it feels like the captain's kind of BS overpowered compared to other characters. We got another thing here. Let's see. What are we going to go for? Uh, the key, that, and then let's go for the random. Another sticky bomb. Good. Like I said, give me all the the offense. I play every roguelike offensively pretty much all the time. And I think that's just the way to go naturally because defense is great and all, but defense is not going to matter whatsoever if you have nothing to back it up. Offense, especially in the Binding of Isaac Afterbirth, plus is paramount. Okay, I'm already taking a lot of damage here. All right, so how this mouse one button works is it's a shotgun, right? But you can hold it to make the spread of the shotgun into uh, basically like a rifle, like basically like a slug. So you can be hyper accurate, which is why I love this character because that actually feels amazing to be able to kind of like focus it like that. Look at that. It's beautiful. All right, so we're trying to find the teleport. There's an easy way to do it. See these sparkles in the air right here? Wait, I think. Am I right? Yeah. See these sparkles? The sparkles tell you where the teleporter is. So there it is right there. We're going to activate it. And okay, so I'm not exactly sure how to play it. So this is going to activate a boss now. And where is he? Where is the boss? What is it? Wandering Vagrant. He's up there. All right, we got to. Oh, my God. Um. Okay, let's do that. Orbital Strikes. Really good, but big cooldown. Okay, uh, the boss is... Okay, I need to... <laughs> There's too much stuff to talk about. All right, watch this. Uh, we're going to do our ultimate now. So, mouse one and mouse two. Now, that's going to drop in these big things. Look at that. It damages the boss, and then also it heals us in this. Okay, so uh, <laughs> we're just going to use all of, our, all of our abilities. You see we're doing pretty good. All of our abilities here. I'm just going to keep laying waste and jumping around. You want to constantly jump around over and over. Okay, boss is dead. Our damage is really good on the captain. Okay, now we're going to do this. Look at this orbital strike. Bam, bam, bam. The damage is ridiculous. Now, when you kill the boss, it drops an item back at the teleport. So let's go grab that. Okay, stun this guy when he's about to laser fire. See? And right click. Look at that. And he's dead. Okay, Jar of Wisps. Good. Will of the Wisp. Detonate enemies on kill. Really good. We're getting a lot of offensive stuff right off the bat. This might be a good run. And I'm happy. Okay, go for this guy and then wait for it. Wait for it. And nope. When the laser Okay, he got me still. Little little slow on the draw there. All right, so we're trying to stay in the teleporter range where this red thing is. <laughs> are you, are you, are you, cat, are you, uh, you understanding everything I'm saying, right? Everybody watching this? So, yeah, we're trying to, uh, death mark. That's good. When we have, like, four debuffs on an enemy, we can deal even extra damage. We're getting so many offensive items. Where I'm actually getting really lucky here, like, no joke. At least as far as I know. A lot of my knowledge for this game comes from Risk of Rain 1, which I did, like I said, I did play a decent amount of. You see those sticky bombs activated quite a lot, by the way. Okay, so proceed through the teleporter. We're done. Now, 
So you need to stay here while the teleporter charges, basically. And also, see, this captain, even though this is a shotgun, look how accurate that is, man. See, you can, you can shoot stuff from across the way. I love this character. Because, yeah, the character's just overpowered. Uh, this is a moon pod. It'll use moon tokens in the top left, which persist throughout runs, which is rare for a roguelike. Uh, we'll open it. Why not? Sure. What do we got? What's this? Get spinel tonic. I know what this does. That's a use item. So it goes over to where our Q button is. Do I want to get other items, or do I just want... I think I just want to... Uh, yeah, I, I, honestly, we're doing well, and you're you're racing against the time. See, the time in the top right. We're already at seven minutes, and we're on easy. We're going to go to medium. I'm just going to hit the... It's probably not the best thing to do. You can choose when to move on. And I'm going to move on now. And that's basically the game, is you're trying to find and activate the teleporter and trying to stave off the ever-increasing difficulty. The difficulty is always increasing all the time in the top right so find the teleporter we're on the next stage now find the teleporter activate it and then you know sort of you're trying to find the balance between getting money from killing enemies and then going to buy items with that money and then watching for the game to get too hard you know watching out for the game to get too hard so all this stuff is where we spend our money right here see this so this is a chest but it takes 58 dollars it costs $58. In the top left, we have 31 So we need to kill more stuff. Because we do want to get some items, if at all possible. Okay. Enemies are killing themselves, which is not good. I need to be killing the enemies. I need to I need to last hit them, a la League of Legends. Now, see that over there? Look at all those sparkles in the air. So we know the teleporter is there. Teleporter located. That is something that I got to shout out Biznap for. If anybody's watching this and knows Biznap, I know that he is really big uh, in this game on Twitch. And I've been watching Biznap for forever because Biznap's kind of... Hopefully this is uh, accurate to say, but his kind of thing is uh, roguelikes. So he's been, you know, I've, I've seen his Isaac videos back in the day. I, I've been a fan of Biznap for a long time. And I know he plays a lot of Risk of Rain because this is another roguelike. And yeah, I was watching some of his uh, VODs to get a little bit better at this game, you know. And he mentioned how there's a way to tell where the teleporter is, and that's because of the sparkles. So big thanks to Biznap because without him, I would not have known that. Now, there's these little turrets in turrets here that we could spend money on, but I'd rather get chests. So I'm trying to find enemies. And I'm trying to charge this gun here to take him out. You can see whenever we do, we get insta money. Uh, and then let's just do... So the little orbital strikes will hit. Okay, I just flat out missed all that crap. Yeah, again, not good. At, so, okay, as we're, as we're going around the map, let's explain the abilities. So, yeah, mouse one is usually your bread and butter in this game with the different classes. We're going to take some falling damage here, but it's fine. Uh, another moon item over there. So the moon items are good and bad, basically. So let's see what we get here. Why not? What do we got? What's this? Get Transcendence. This turns all of our HP into armor. I'm going to do it. I don't know if that's... Convert all your health into a shield. Increase maximum health. So, yeah. Instead of having health now, we have Transcended and now have armor. And I don't really... I feel like that's a bad thing over good. And, yeah. That's just the moon... The lunar items in general. I've noticed. They're good and bad. So, yeah. You kind of just have to see what's... Uh, you know, if it's worth it, I guess. And then the other lunar item we got that where the Q is... That thing has a chance to give us a big buff, but also has a chance to give us, like, a negative thing, which has not happened for me yet, which means it'll probably happen in this recording. <laughs> All right, these are little free money pods. Okay, man, why are we dropping... We're getting the uh, on-hit effect, like, every time. All right, here's another chest. So, yeah, there's item rarities. That's really good for the captain. That uh, gives us a chance to bleed enemies, which is fantastic, because... The captain is applying, like, all these different shots from the shotgun every at every point. Which means you can stack bleed damage really, really, really fast. Yeah, boy. Okay, do we want to do... Yeah, let's go for it. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit the Q button. Okay, we got, the, we got the buff. So now we're, like, faster. We deal more damage. We have more healing. All right, we're going to drop in our pods, which you can only do permanently twice every uh, stage. Oh, look at that damage, dude. Look at that. Da and he's dead. That's the Beetle Queen. She's dead. Sorry. Okay, and again, they dropped an item, so let's go grab it. Infusion. Good. So what Infusion does, every time you kill... Does it even work for this when you're like a robot? When you have the when you have the Transcendence thing? Okay, and gets done. So he can't do that to us. So Infusion, yeah. <laughs> God. I, I don't know if I do a good job. I, I feel like I get really excited. I love explaining things, but I also... I know that I talk in a way that's kind of like overload on information... 
And I've like, you know, I've played video games with my girlfriend and she's just been like, okay, wait, relax. I don't know. I got to figure out how to play the game for it. I'm like, okay, yeah, sorry. But I don't know how it comes off to you, the viewer. I wonder if people enjoy me talking all the damn time and explaining every single little thing without giving you time to understand. Or I wonder if you hate it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I really love explaining things, though. I I've noticed that's like one of my favorite things to do on videos. But anyways, yeah, so we got the uh, we got the good thing for our use item. That uh, lunar item. It can be bad, but we got the good thing, which buffs our speed, our healing, and whatever. But it's gone now. It's only a timed buff. So we're going to stay within the uh, red confines here until the teleporter in the top right goes to 100%. You can tell it's pretty close. Seven, eight, nine, and it's done. So now we can leave. But here's, here's where the game gets a little tricky. You got to decide what you want to do. You can just leave and move on and make the game easier on yourself, but it doesn't matter how quickly you move through the stages if you don't have items to make your task easier. Ooh, even more. Okay, gasoline uh, sets enemies on fire when you kill them. So again, more. Uh, we're getting all the... Uh, this never happens, by the way. Whenever I play this game, I get all of the gosh darn... Um, you know what? I want to switch this out for a better use item. So these orange chests are use items. Uh, you can tell because, like, if you walk up, it says equipment barrel. Equipment means a use item. Okay, what do we got here? Get Gorag's Opus. You and your allies enter a frenzy. So that's actually similar to the lunar item we just switched it out for, except it's always good. And how I play video games, I always prefer always good to, like, half good, half bad. Always. Okay, let's see. What do we have here? A uh, bunch of defensive items, and then what's this? Uh, tougher times chance to block incoming damage. So all three of those things were defensive choices, which, again, not a fan of. Give me, give me damage all the time. Fuel cell hold an additional equipment charge. Reduce equipment cooldown. So that's actually pretty good. Uh, so this, we could switch out other stuff. Hmm. This would... Huh, is that going to be better? I think it is. So use 3D printer. Uses a white item to make this white item, which is the bleed thing. So it's going to use a sticky bomb, and it's going to give us a tri-tip dagger. And I think that's better. And we're, Yeah, I think we're going to switch out the gasolines, too. I think we're going to switch out all the stuff. So all of our white items are now going to be increased bleed chance, which honestly I think is better. Oh, I forgot we picked up that thing, too. Okay, and that should be it because if we – now we have uh, even more tri-tips. Yeah, we have six tri-tips, and the, those are the only – oh, we have a gasoline. And we'll keep the, we'll keep the gasoline. All right, let's get the healing drone. Yeah, there's little robots that you can repair with the money too as well. Okay, so all we have is 168 gold left, which means we can probably open up one more chest. But, see, this is the thing. It kind of wastes time trying to track them down. And then the game's getting harder and harder and harder. You see, that's the trade-off. See, there's the bleed stack. Okay. So I'm looking for chests. That's a 3D printer, not a chest. So that'll just give us a random white item or whatever the heck. Mm, I, like, if I don't see anything, I'm just going to move on because... Oh, that's a green 3D printer. Okay, so this one switches out green items for whatever that is. Let me take a look at what it is. It's uh, razor wire, which, like, shoots out razor wires when you get hit or something. I'm just going to move on. All right, we're going to spend the rest of the money on one of these little turrets down here. Hello. And what about you? How much do you cost? Yeah. All right, so on the top left, you can see all of our drones that we've got. Healing drone, healing drone, gunner turret, gunner turret. And those move with us when we uh, move to another stage, which we're about to do because we did the teleporter event. And again, at the top right, you can see it's going about to go from medium to hard. So you're always racing against the clock, just trying to find an efficient way to get items while also keeping things moving. What is happening here? Oh, this thing's stunt. Yeah, so these are our, this is our ultimate, which I didn't even talk about yet. All right, let's get the heck out of here. All right, I need to start explaining certain things and not just explaining every single thing. Um, so again, mouse one, it's a shotgun. You can either fire it immediately to shoot basically a shotgun blast, which obviously has a bigger spread, or, all right, let's take a look around. Where can we see the little pixels? Uh, don't see them. Or you can hold it to make it hyper accurate. See, like that. And so then you can snipe things, and each one of those is stacking that bleed. See that? It's just like 12 times bleed, more DPS over and over and over, damage over time. Okay, and then the right mouse button, I've heard Biznap describe as bad, so I'm inclined to believe him. I don't actually know. 
I think when you're up close, you want to keep going because you have less time. Um, you know, you don't want to charge the shot. You want to just shoot over and over and over again because you have less time to charge, and then you can just get more damage out rather than charging it up. Uh, so, yeah, I'm inclined to inclined to believe, Biznap, that the right mouse button is bad. But anyways, I mean, I don't find it too bad because what it does is it stuns. And so if we get one, like for this this guy, for instance, he's going to charge me, or he's going to charge whatever that is, I guess. But we can stun him with the right mouse button, and then he's just, you know, then he's open to attacks. So that's what that's for. It's just kind of a very quick utility, like, ooh, we got a legendary item. Interstellar Desk Plant. What is that? Plant a healing fruit on kill. I have never gotten that until now. All right, check this out. So he's going to charge me. Watch this. And nope, we stun him. See that? So I really like it. I don't know. And there's the, where's the plant? Here's the plant. I don't know. I don't know. I have not. Oh, there it is. So now we have a little healing field. See that? So yeah, that's a legendary item. That is um, more powerful than your common and your rare, your blue, your your uh, your whites and your greens. All right, let's just. Oh well, I don't know. What do we do now? Do we just go for the teleporter event immediately? I'm gonna try it. All right, let's go. So we're gonna pop it. Now we're gonna pop our ult on top of wherever the boss is. Where is the boss? Magma worm. Okay. This guy's tricky, and that's why. All right, we're gonna... It's gonna be really hard to hit him with this ultimate, but we're gonna try to do it. I think we did hit him, actually. All right, we have two of those ultimates, and they're basically just like uh, little helper drones. Uh, they heal you, but you can modify them in a lot of different ways. All right, this is gonna be insane. All right, we're gonna pop our Q, our active ability, which put us into a frenzy, which I don't even... <laughs> don't even really know what that means. We're gonna drop the orbital. <laughs> There's too much stuff to explain, man. There's just too much stuff. We're all you gotta know, we're using all of our abilities, okay? And I'm um, trying to stay alive, which you can die at any point in this game. This game gets crazy hard. Ooh, ooh, Molten Preparator, chance on hit to fire magma balls. We got the, uh, we got the boss weapon from that. So whenever we hit something, we have a chance to fire magma balls. Really good, I think. All right, I'm using my, I'm pressing Q. Wait, what, why is Q not activating? Hello? Uh... I genuinely don't know why Q's not working. It should put me into, like, a frenzy where I move faster or something, I thought. But that's not even happening. I'm, I'm tapping Q. There must be something blocking it. I don't know what it is. I have no clue. But it's all good. You can see we pretty much decimated everything. I just feel like the captain is so BS. <laughs> I feel like it's so much easier to win with this character than it is with other characters. And I also really like the moveset. So yeah, the right mouse button just kind of fires a little taser and keeps somebody stunned until uh, until they take more damage. Like, you can... I, as far as I understand... Here, watch. We'll do it on this guy. Crap, I just missed. Okay. As far as I understand, as long as they don't take, like, 10% of their maximum health in a certain amount of time, they stay they stay stunned. All right, I guess he... what? I don't freaking know. Who knows, dude? I don't know what I'm talking about half the time. I'm new to this game, as I said. Anyways, that's what the mouse 2 button does for this character. It kind of locks him up. Uh, shift does this. You can set three little areas where that happens, and that is overpowered as hell. Also, what's this? Offer sh to Shrine of Order. Uses one of our, our lunar tokens. Uh, okay. You have been sequenced. Uh, did that just take items from me? What did that do? Uh, okay. I feel like that took items from me, and I don't want that to happen. Crap, did we have, we, well, okay, I don't, uh, what else did we have? Did it double up my items? Is that what it did? Because it looks like we have more tri-tip daggers, more fuel, fuel cells, and then we have another intergalactic space plan or whatever. Yeah, it looks like that's what it did. It, like, doubled up some of my items. Okay, meat regenerate health after killing an enemy. All the white items are pretty, like, simplistic. You know, it's like, whenever you kill something, you heal. Whenever you do this, you do this. Whenever you do that, you do that. Blah, blah, blah. The green items are a little stronger, and then the red items are legendary. They have really big effects, but they're rarer, obviously. The blue items are lunar, which means that they have a trade-off, usually. One good thing, one bad thing, or at least it's not as, uh... But we can use our health there to get some money, but no need. Um, and then the yellow items are boss items. I don't think our damage is doing too well now. I would hope for, like, a bigger hit on dudes like that, but that's fine. Um, anyway, so yeah, yellow, so we got the Magma Worm's, uh, boss item, which, like, has a chance to launch fireballs, which is pretty neat. Let's see what we got here. Uh, gain a temporary barrier on kill. Yeah, kind of weak defensive item, but whatever. 
Uh, any everything helps, of course. But yeah, we definitely want offense. Just like Isaac, like I said, the more offense, the better. The more offense, the faster you kill things, the faster you trigger things like, you know, heal on kill or drop this on kill or do these effects or whatever. I'm pressing Q, man, but it ain't doing a damn thing. Does my Q button just not work? I... Oh, yeah, it's making a noise. It's just like, no, <laughs> it doesn't want to do it. I don't know why that is. If anybody knows, please explain in the comment section below. Uh, we just got fireworks, which whenever you activate anything at all, it launches fireworks out. And we have a lot of money, but I'm not seeing a lot of chests. So one good test, or one good tip, sorry, is that when you're doing the teleporter event, you'll see a very obvious, like, little, these little claws locking up, uh... Locking up any sort of interactables. Okay, this is all defensive stuff. Oh, no, this is fireworks. See, that's what fireworks does. It launches stuff. And yeah, uh, this game has a lot of stacking of items. Like, you can get one item, and it'll stack with another item, and they'll just keep stacking, 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 stacking. And I think they stack in different ways. It's not always just doubling up the effect or whatever. But, for instance, since we have two fireworks now, there's going to be, like, whatever, more fireworks, or the fireworks will deal more damage. I don't know exactly how everything works together, but that's how this game goes. Rather than Isaac, where you typically just get, you know... Can you even double up on items at all? I don't think so. I don't remember. It's been a while since I... I 100 percent at Isaac, and then I was just like, okay, that's enough of that. Because I put a lot of time into it. Alright, so yeah, we're just kind of going around and finding all the items now. Now that the teleporter event has been done. Soldier's Syringe is one of my favorite items. It increases attack speed. Flat attack speed increase, which is super duper good. Especially if you start stacking it, obviously. We've got another equipment chest here, which when I was new, I was making the mistake of always opening. But obviously, if we've got a good equipment, we don't want to open that. Because it'll replace whatever equipment we do have. Cautious, cautious Slug, Rapidly Heal Outside of Danger. Another defensive option. Uh, let's go ahead and pop this because I don't know why this equipment is not working. Yeah, this one works. Okay, Milky Chrysalis lets us fly around. Yeah, gain temporary flight. We can do sort of this, which is neat. There is a time chest here that I have no idea what to do with. Uh, the only thing I can guess is that we have to open that up before the timer runs out. So you basically have to get here really fast. Uh, and I don't know how to do that because it seems, you know, you just have to rush the teleporters, I guess, or whatever. All right, I guess we'll move on. I really wanted more out of that. I don't think we've got quite enough damage at the moment. So I'm a little worried as to if this is going to work out or not because this game's going to get very hard very quick, as you will see. Okay, let's get the heck on out of here. The rest of the money that you have turns into experience. On the bottom left, we've got, you know, level 10. And we're off to the next stage. Okay, so let's see. We talked about Mouse 1. We talked about Mouse 2. Uh, Mouse 2. Shift is an amazing ability, but it has a big cooldown. It does that gigantic damage, you know, little orbital strike thing. And then R is our, you know, sort of ultimate, but it, it's not always an ultimate. It's just, you know, whatever the character has. In this case, R drops down these, like, giant... Uh, you can only do it twice per stage permanently. Um, but it drops down these little, like, support drones. And as far as I understand, you can modify it. I don't know... I, to be quite honest, I don't know exactly what they do. Uh, I read a little bit about it, because it doesn't really explain it all that much, surprisingly, in the description. Like, you have to actually look online, it feels, to know exactly what it is that they do. But, I do know that they heal. So you can, and they also do massive damages. Oh, crap, we need more money for that. Uh, so you can deal massive damage to the boss or whatever by dropping it on top of them. Uh, which is what I try to do. And then you stay in the range and then you get healed, you know? But they can do different things like stun and whatever. Okay, can we pop this open? Just enough. All right, big chest and infusion. So, yeah, I didn't explain what that is. Uh, killing an enemy, enemy permanently increases your health up to 100. So you can get a permanent health increase if you pick up infusion. And obviously that stacks too. So the more infusion you have, the more base health that you can get which is pretty neat when you have something like transcendence i guess which is just supposed to be armor which i don't know how it works but maybe like you take less damage if you have armor rather than health i don't really know i don't know if transcendence is considered a good item or a bad item or what okay our damage is severely lacking i think i think we're gonna start running into trouble now i think this is where the run starts to be at risk of dying <laughs> But we'll give it our best shot, you know. We'll do our best. And yeah, remember, I'm brand new to this. So if I've made a lot of mistakes, that's just kind of how it is. 
But, uh, you know, I am not totally new to roguelikes and also to Risk of Rain, because I did play a bit of Risk of Rain 1, like I said. So hopefully at least I'm somewhat making sense with what I'm talking about. Anyways, we're going to use Milky Chrysalis to kind of move around the map a little bit faster. It has a very low cooldown, plus we have those other equipment charges, of course, from those other things. Okay, Chrono Bobble is going to slow down enemies, which is pretty neat. There's the teleporter down there, by the way. Okay, there's a secret character on this map also, which I already unlocked, FYI. All right, now here's the thing. This uh, character here, the captain, does not have any sort of like movement ability. So we have to watch out for fall damage. So we're gonna, luckily we have, oh my God. So yeah, you can see it's starting to get a little, a little scary. Why did that, oh, okay, okay, hold on. I'm trying to, <laughs> hold on. Okay, we're not doing too well. Uh-oh, uh-oh. How do I not have enough? Oh my god. All right, we need to start doing those on-kill things so that we can start healing because it drops those healing things, whatever. Oh my god. Um, did I get the... I Excuse... Did I open this freaking chest, please? There's so many healing fields. Red Whip is a Maple Story reference. If anybody gets that, shout out to you. Because I always bring up Maple Story whenever I can. How am I... Dude, I have all these healing... Oh, because Transcendence. Oh no because transcendence yeah why does that ability even exist it seems like utter garbage so we're not getting a lot of healing effects because we took transcendence and thus we don't heal because we have armor uh we're gonna pop whatever this is what is that incinerator drone a very costly drone hopefully it's worth it you can see it's dealing a pretty decent amount of damage all right let's go for the teleporter event now we'll pop that up too why not okay here we go let's just do it uh, see what we get Magma Worm again. I, you know, I kind of had a feeling, to be honest. All right, we're going to drop down these Orbital Drones just to get some, I, I guess, healing. I don't even know <laughs> if it's going to heal me or not. Try to hit him with the Orbital Strikes. Really hard to hit because, obviously, oh, crap. So much stuff happening. Yeah, and we're dead. Warm for life. I uh, at least unlocked an achievement. I don't know what that means, but there we go. Okay. So let's do a little post-mortem. Yeah, die three times while burning. Oh, great. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> die three times while burning. Okay, cool. So let's do a little post-mortem. What happened there? Well, basically, I took Transcendence, which was dumb. I don't think I'm going to take that item anymore. It probably has really good synergies, and I'm not sure what they are. It turns all your health into armor, which is good question mark is that even a good thing but then we had all that healing stuff and it doesn't heal us because we have stupid armor instead now i think you can still heal though like the cautious slug if we went out of battle i think if we stopped it would just like heal us um because it heals you you know when you when you're not in combat or whatever the heck it is anyways we took we had two of those rare items two of those legendary items uh whenever you kill something it drops a healing plant but it was not healing us at all. And I can only assume that's because we turned into a robot with Transcendence. So I think that's in the end what bit us. Uh, I've definitely gotten a lot farther than that. I have beaten the final boss, I think, on normal. I did some easy runs to unlock some stuff. I do think I have beaten the game at least once on Rainstorm, but I can't remember. Definitely not Monsoon, which is hard. Um, but yeah, I love this game. It's very fun. It's obviously very popular. Very, very well received on Steam. There are a lot of different characters with a lot of different abilities. So far, my favorites are the Commando. The Huntress feels too slow. Uh, Multi, I know, is strong, um, but he feels too slow as well for me. Engineer just does not have the damage output, it feels, especially with the bouncing grenades as the primary. It feels like it takes forever to launch these, uh, but really good in multiplayer because he's got the bubble shield. Uh, Artificer was really fun. I feel like people don't like this character as far as I've heard, but I really enjoyed playing this character. Uh, I was able to switch out my primary for like uh, some skill where you fire 12 things and it's a delayed explosion. And that was fun. Uh, Mercenary is melee, and it's very weird, but apparently really good, especially because if this rate like makes you invincible, so that's kind of nuts. Uh, Rex is fun. He uses HP for skills, uh, so it's a little tricky because you got to watch your HP total. I have not played Loader. I have not played Acrid. And the Captain, obviously, is just really fun and really good, it seems. But that's Risk of Rain 2. You know the usual. If you really want to see more of this, let me know in the comments. But it's rare that people are dying to see something that's not Elder Scrolls or fallout but you know let me know what you thought uh i really like the idea of making wednesdays just whatever the hell i feel like recording you know because it's fun and you know i think they always take a hit on views no matter what but as a content creator you just kind of have to be like well is it worth the fun aspect of it 
and to try and convert some people to like, hey, look, this could be fun to watch too. I think it is. So we'll just see. But let me know what you think. Yada, yada, yada. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for supporting me on Patreon. Thanks so much for supporting me in any way, shape, or form. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.